Hello and welcome to the course of Advanced Algorithm Analysis. This is week number 10. Before going to start our lecture, uh, let me revise what we have studied in the previous week. In week number 9, uh, we were talking about the quick sort algorithm. Uh, like the merge sort algorithm, quick sort algorithm is also based on the divide and conquer approach where we have the running time uh, which is equal to n log n and they are considered to be a very efficient algorithm in terms of sorting large uh, large large list of items or values we discussed the basic idea of quick sort algorithm how actually it converts an unsorted list of item into a sorted list of items and that is based on the selection of the pivot which is a special value and it has an important role in sorting out the data there were different strategies uh, that we have studied for the selection of the pivot for example the strategy number one was uh, very simple that you have to pick the first element as a pivot the second strategy was that instead of selecting the first element uh, you may select the last element to become the pivot and the third strategy is that randomly select an element and consider it as a pivot. Finally, we saw that uh, you can also select, you can also take the median of any three values and then select it as a pivot. Then we saw how quicksort algorithm actually works with the help of an analogy and with different examples. And we also analyze the running time of the quick sort algorithm with the help of recursive tree method. In this lecture, uh, we will study about the heap and also heap sort algorithm. Here is a road map for today's lecture. We will start with the objectives as usual. Uh, at the end, what we expect you to learn. Then after the objectives, uh, we will start with the context and introduction to the heap. What is a heap? Also, what are the different types of heaps like the min heap and max heap? Then we will compare uh, the binary heaps with our binary trees. And we will see the differences and similarities between these two types of structure. We will move towards the implementation of a heap with the help of array. And then we will perform uh, basic operations uh, like insertion and deletion from a heap. Finally, we will see how we can actually create a heap from any given uh, list of items. And then at the end, uh, we will finish this lecture with the heap sort algorithm. Here is the brief, ob brief objectives for this lecture. At the end of this week, uh, you will be able to understand the basic concept of heap. What is heap? How it works? What are the different operations that we can perform over a heap? And so on. You will also learn how you can actually represent a heap. What is the best way to represent the heap? Why heap is used? And why it is helpful? Uh, what are the other structures that we can actually implement with the help of the heap? And finally, you will also be able to learn and understand the heap sort algorithm, which is based on the heap itself and also its running time. The first thing is, what is heap? Before going to define a heap, let me give you a context to the topic. There are many different algorithms where there is a need for a data structure that supports the two basic operations. For example, in certain scenarios, you would need how to insert an element. And in other scenarios, uh, you will be interested, interested to find the element with a minimum or maximum value. What I mean to say is that there are two basic operations that is required in certain data structures. These operations are inserting a new element and finding an element with a maximum or minimum value. And you know data structure is actually the way 
by using which we can represent our data and there are different ways by using which we can represent our data for example uh, arrays list link list stake queue dq trees graphs heaps etc so all these are examples of data structure and we can perform different operations on data structure and these uh, operations are like insertion deletion updation searching sorting etc so among these uh, different operations that we can perform on a data structure the two of most important are inserting an element and finding the element with a maximum or minimum value now a data structure that support both these two basic operation is actually known as a priority queue you know there are different types of queue data structure like the DQ which is also pronounced as DIC and also the priority queue so the priority queue is a data structure which is helpful in inserting an, a new element and also finding the element with a minimum and maximum value or maximum value why because in priority a queue we actually assign a priority to each and every element so the so the element which has the highest priority will stay at the front of the queue and the element that has the lowest priority will stay at uh, the end of the queue right so in this way we can actually insert a new element very easily and also we can find the element with the maximum and minimum value very easily now if somebody want to use a regular queue instead of using the priority queue then there is going to be a problem and the problem is that finding the largest or smallest value in a regular queue is an expensive operation or you can say time consuming operation because it will require searching the entire queue okay because we do not have priorities associated with the elements so searching for the smallest or largest value is an expensive operation if we use the regular queue another possibility that you may raise is why not use a sorted array instead of using a priority queue and we know that in sorted array the elements are in sorted form either ascending or descending okay in sorted array searching an element is not a problem but insertion is an expensive operation because it will require shifting a large portion of the elements if you want to insert a new element into a sorted array then you have to move the remaining elements to one position forward or, or backward depending on the situation right so both regular queue and array are not suited for such type of operations hence an efficient implementation of a priority queue is to use a simple data structure that is called heap in summary heap is a preferred data structure for the implementation of priority queue and heaps are commonly known as binary heap so binary heaps are a common way of implementing priority queues okay now let us come toward the definition of a binary heap so binary heap is uh, binary heap is a data structure that actually takes the form of a binary tree and you know what is a binary tree a special type of t tree which has at most two children any node can has can have at most two children at most mean two or less than two it could be one or it could be zero it is considered to be uh, to be a, a binary tree and the binary heap is actually a type of a binary heap is actually a type of the binary tree with certain properties and we are going to study those properties in a moment another thing to remember about the heap or binary heap is that it is a complete binary tree or nearly complete binary tree nearly is also known as almost complete binary tree if you remember we studied 
two types of binary tree there are other types of binary tree as well but we studied two of them the first one was full binary tree and the second one was complete binary tree and they are almost the similar thing with little differences a full binary tree which is also known as a proper binary tree or two tree is actually a binary tree in which every node every node other than the leaf nodes has exactly two children you can also say that a binary tree is said to be full binary tree if each internal node internal mean have all those node which is not the root node and which are not the leaf node they are known as internal node so a binary tree is said to be a full binary tree if each internal node has exactly two children that is the definition for the full binary tree but we are interested in complete binary tree in this context a binary tree is said to be complete if all its level are filled except the deepest level what is the deepest level the deepest level of the tree is the last level of the tree where the, the leaf nodes exist so in a in a complete binary tree all its level are filled except for the deepest level where they may or may not be complete why because there are situations where uh, the tree is not uh, a complete or a full binary tree for example if you have only two nodes in a tree in this case the root node itself will have only one child while the other child will have no child because we have only two nodes one will become the the root node and the second will become the child node the situation is like this in this case we have a parent and a child and this is an example of a binary tree and this is also almost complete binary tree or nearly complete binary tree but the property is that a complete binary tree is a binary tree in which every level so this is level this is our last level so every level except possibly the last is completely filled and if it is not completely filled then all the nodes are far left as possible in this example if we have only one child then that child must be the left child if you consider it like this then this will not be an example of a nearly complete binary tree or a complete binary tree because the child is the right child it must be left child so this is about the complete binary tree you can also define a binary tree to be almost complete if it is complete except that possibly one or more leaves that occupy the right most position is missing this is another way to define that the rightmost node of the last of the deepest level may be missing okay now coming back toward the lee uh, the toward the heap actually heap is a is a binary tree which type of binary tree complete binary tree or you can say nearly complete binary tree it is a type of a special type of binary tree or a particular kind of binary tree which has two properties what are those property the first property is related with the shape of the heap and the second property is related with the heap itself what is shape property as i just mentioned that a binary heap is going to be a complete binary tree okay so this property state that the heap um, the binary heap must be a complete or nearly complete binary tree that is the first property and you know the complete binary tree that all the levels of the tree except possibly the last one the deepest one are fully filled and if the last level of the tree is not complete the nodes of that level are filled from left to right if any tree 
satisfy these two properties then we can say that it is actually an example of a binary heap so this is the first property that its shape must be date of the shape of the complete or nearly complete binary tree second property is related with the values of the nodes and that is called the heap property and it states that the value of each node in a tree must be greater than or equal to the value stored in each of its children what does it mean for example you have a tree which has three nodes the value of the parent node must be greater than the values of its children now this is an example of a binary heap because it satisfied both these two properties why the shape is like a complete binary tree and also the values at each node parent node that is greater than or equal to the children if any tree satisfied these two property it is known as a binary heap the second property is important it plays an important role in different operations so any parent node in a tree is larger than the than the children and also the root node has the largest of all the elements in a tree we will see more examples in a couple of minutes more technically if you have uh, two nodes this is v and this is parent of v that is pv so if v and pv are a node and its parent respectfully respectively then the key of the item stored in the parent node which is 12 it must be greater than or equal to the value stored in v which is the child node so this is another way to define the binary heap okay we are talking about something which is greater like the value of the parent must be greater however that is not the only possible case sometime we need to deal with a situation where the value stored at the parent must be less than the child so we can divide the heap into two types heaps can be classified as either max heaps or min heaps and these are the two basic types of heaps first let us see what is max heap heaps where the parent key is greater than or equal to the child keys are called max heap in this example what do you think about it this is an example of a max heap or min heap actually this is an example of max heap because the value of the parent is greater than the values of the child okay so a heap where the parent key is greater than or equal to the child keys they are known as max heap another uh, thing that you know that you need to understand or know about the max heap is the value at the root so the root of a max heap will always contain the largest element in the tree and that is the beauty remember the priority queue where the where the element with the highest priority stay at the front of the queue so we can easily implement priority queue by using max heap because here the largest value will will be at the root node of the tree will occupy the root node of the tree however if you want the large the, the smallest value to occupy the root then such type of heap is known as min heap in min heap the parent key uh, is actually less than or equal to the children or you can say the root of a min heap contain the smallest value or you can also say that if the smallest element is stored in the root of the tree then it is known as a min heap tree or min heap uh, binary tree 
Okay, for this lecture, uh, we will confine our attention to max heaps only. If the structure and operation associated with the min heap are similar to that of the max heap. Okay, but we will focus only on the max heap where the largest value will always be stored in the root of the tree. Let us see some examples to clarify the concept of heaps. Here are some trees. All these trees are actually binary trees. And we, want, we have to select those trees which satisfied the property of the heap and those trees which will not satisfy the properties of the heap. Let us consider our first example. Okay. The tree which the tree we trees which are mentioned in a let us consider them one by one okay first one 15 and 6 two nodes let us see whether it is a binary tree yes it is a binary tree because it has only every node has less than two less than or equal to two children now let us see whether it is a heap or not. Two things. First, shape of the tree. It is a complete binary tree or almost complete binary tree because the node has one child and there is a left child. Second property, heap. Whether the value stored at the root node is the greatest? Yes, we have only two nodes and 15 is greater than 6. So it satisfies both the property of heap, binary heap. We can say it is an example of a binary heap. Second example. Now we have more levels, more nodes. First, let us see the shape of the tree. 10 has two kids, okay. 8 has two children, okay. 7 has one children and their children is left children. So the shape is okay. Now let us see the heap property. These two kids has, have a parent and the value is 8 and 8 is greater than 2 as well as it is greater than 3. 3. Come here. We have a parent and a child. The value of parent that is 7 is greater than the value of the child which is 6. Okay. That is fight. Now this root node which is 10. The value of 10 is greater than 8, which is the child node, and it is also greater than 7, which is the child node. We can say that this also satisfies the property, the heap property. And the largest value in this tree is 10, and the largest value is at the root node. Done. It is also an example of a heap. What about this one? Shape, OK. Maximum complete binary tree because both the child are available and the value at the parent is greater than both the child's 10 and 12. And also this is the root node. So the largest value is at the root. Hence it is also example of the heap, binary heap. What about this? The shape is okay. Left child is present. But the second property is not satisfied. Okay, we are studying about max heap. In max heap, this value must be greater than the child. 6 is not greater than 15, so it is not example of binary heap. What about this tree? The heap property is satisfied. Okay, We have almost complete binary tree. Here we have a single child, but the child is the leftmost child. So that's okay. Here, this value must be greater than both the child. But it is less than both the child. So this does not satisfy the second property. It satisfied it satisfies the property because it is greater than the child. The largest value is at the root node. But here the property is missing. And this tree is not an example of a binary heap. What about this one? The simplest one. Hmm. The shape property is satisfied, but the heap property is not. The largest value is 21. It must be at the root node. But the root node contain a value which is less than its child. The value at the root node must be greater than the child. It is not the case. 
so this is not an example and this does not satisfy the first property the shape property it has a single child but that child must be the left child while in this case the child is the right child property number one is violated here last tree you can see here again we have a right kid so if any node has a children it must be the left children so it is also not an example of a binary heap i hope after these examples uh, your concept about the binary heap must be clear one important consideration is that uh, the root of the heap has the maximum or minimum value but but the but the order of other elements are not predictable sometime the value of the left child could be less than the value of the right child while sometime the value of the left child must be greater than the right child it is like a conclusion that the maximum or the minimum value should be at the root of the heap but the order of other elements are not predictable for example the maximum element is always at the index zero in the max heap but the minimum element isn't necessarily to be the last one okay or in simple word uh, sometime the value of the left kid is going to be smaller than the value of the right kid and sometime the value of the left kid kid is going to be greater than the value of the right child why binary heap why not to use other regular trees like uh, one of the tree which is very famous is known as b s t binary search tree so here is a comparison between the heap and other regular trees the first point is uh, order of nodes if we take the example of binary search tree it has special properties and the properties are like this the left child must be smaller than its parent let's suppose we have a tree like this the left child must be less than the parent and the right child must be greater than the parent such type of tree is known as binary search tree okay when binary search tree the left child must be smaller than its parent and the right child must be greater than its parent however this is not true for the heap as we saw in the heap both children must be smaller than the parent it is going to be like this 10 9 or it can also be like this remember the order of the children is not predictable okay so the properties of both these uh, trees is different here the left child must be smaller than the parent and the right child must be greater than the children while in the binary heap both the children must be less than the parent in the max heap that is this is one difference second difference is uh, related with the memory with the performance traditional trees take up more memory than just the data they store you would need to allocate additional storage for the node objects and pointers to the left and right nodes how they are connected they are connected with the help of the pointers and you need memory to store those pointers while in case of heap it only uses a plain array for storage and it uses no pointers which means it will take less memory as compared to other normal or traditional trees third property is related with the searching okay searching is fast in binary tree but in heap the searching is a slow process searching is not the top priority in a heap 
since the purpose of a heap is to put the largest or the smallest node at the front and allow a relatively fast insertion inserts and deletes operations so uh, searching is not uh, a prefer operation on the heap trees or heap uh, binary heaps another uh, comparison is related with the balancing a binary search tree bst must be balanced so that uh, most operation as we know they have log n performance on the tree as it, there is the height of the tree you can either insert and delete your data in a random order or use something like an avl tree or red black tree i'm sorry you are not familiar with these trees if you are not familiar please ignore these terms but with heaps uh, we don't actually need the entire tree to be sorted we just want the heap property to be fulfilled in the tree so balancing is not an issue in the heap because of the way the heap is structured and heap can always guarantee log and performance what i mean to say is balancing of the tree is not required in case of the heap tree now let us come toward the implementation of a heap heaps are commonly implemented with an array the the most uh, commonly used method for the implementation of heap is to use an array any binary tree can be stored in an array that is clearly understood but because a binary heap is always a complete binary tree in this case it can be stored more compactly compactly mean as i just mentioned uh, we do not require extra space for pointers and stuff like that uh, that is why you can say that a binary heap is always stored in a compact form in a tree no space is required for pointer instead the parent and children of each node can be found by arithmetic uh, calculation and we will see them in a moment well uh, if you have a heap for example the heap is represented by a t and remember there is almost complete binary tree that is by definition we know it the total number of nodes or element in this is n represented by n so we want to represent it with the help of an array and the array is represented by h the index okay one important thing to remember here is that in this implementation we are going to start the initial index from 1 and not from 0 normally in programming uh, we are familiar to start the index of the array and other things like list and tuples etc from zero but here in the implementation of a heap to make things uh, a bit simpler and clear we are going to start it from one so suppose you have a heap represented by t and it has uh, n elements or n nodes so if you want to represent it by an array uh, for example h and the first element is stored at location 1 and the last element will store at location n in the following way these are the the ways uh, the things that we need to understand for the representation of the heap by using an array the root of this of this heap uh, which we represented by t it must be stored at the first index what does it mean let's suppose you have an array and you want to store the nodes of the tree in this array let's suppose the the tree is like this this node has a value 20 it has a value 10 and it has a value 5 remember the indexes 1 2 3 4 5 like this you can make two more nodes here 1 2 3 4 5 these are the indexes the positions the locations of each element so what does it mean 
the root must be stored at the first location the name of this array is h we have a root the value of root is 20 where we have to store the root it must be stored at location number one now what about the other nodes the other elements we also have uh, a special way for doing that suppose you have a node x x could be anything two three four five and you want to store it in this array at location j j could be anything two three four five any of index okay now if it has a left child then this child is stored in this location to j for example the j here is one the value of j is let's suppose one so what about its left children where we need to store it we can store this uh, left node in this location to multiply by j the value of j is one that is two so the 60 will be stored here at second number location if it also has a right children for example in this case we have a right children as well where to store these children in this array here is the formula to multiply by j to multiply by j the value of j is 1 plus 1 it will give you 3 store this 5 at index number 3 okay this is a technical way a mathematical way of calculating the locations of the nodes of the tree in the corresponding array what about this element for example the value here is let's suppose uh, 3 how you will calculate it now here j is equal to 2 apply the formula to multiply by j the value of j is 2 to multiply by 2 is equal to 4 okay this is going to be stored at the fourth location what about the right kid the right child 2j plus 1 2 multiply by j which is 2 plus 1 will give you 5 which means this uh, this this one is going to be stored at the fifth location the value is also 5 okay now what about the parent of uh, the parent of element hj what about the parent for example j is equal to 2 where we need to store its parent in a bottom up approach here is the formula for storing the the parent so j in this case is 2 2 divided by 2 and take a floor function it will give you 1 so the parent of this node is stored at location number 1 and we already know that this is the parent of this node similarly if you want to calculate the parent of this node which is at location third so here the value of j is 3 put in the formula j divided j which is 3 3 divided by 2 you will get 1.5 and when you get the floor function the output is going to be 1 this is the parent of both these two nodes the parent of 5 and also the parent of 2 this is a way how you can find the left child the right child and parent of the two what about the leaf nodes what about the leaf nodes Hmm, how you can find the leaf of a tree let's suppose you have a tree like this this is one index one index two index three index four five and six how you will find the location of the leaf nodes that is very simple n is the total number of elements what is the total number of elements here six six divided by two take floor function plus one what we will get from here three plus one is equal to four it means that the first uh, root the first sorry the first leaf node of this tree will store at location number four what about the second leaf n divided by two plus two which mean n in our case is same that is 6 divided by 2 3 plus 2 you will get 5 the next root is at the next leaf is at location number 5 and then n plus 2 divide n divided by 2 plus 3 and so on 
you will get the leaf nodes with the help of this formula or this equation okay uh let us see the more practical things about the implementation of the heap uh, in this figure uh, we note that if the tree nodes are numbered from 1 to n not from 0 so they are numbered from 1 to n n is the total number of elements 10 in this case the value of n is 10 so in this figure uh, which is an example of the implementation of a heap we numbered the nodes from 1 to 10 the starting index is 1 Okay, from a top down manner, the nodes are numbered, and also from left to right, they are numbered. Then each entry hi is represented in the corresponding tree by the node numbered. This numbering is indicated in the figure by the labels uh, next to the tree. These are the indexes. Using this method, uh, given a heap, is uh, an array we can easily construct its co its corresponding tree and we and vice versa for example you can construct a tree from the array or you can construct an array from the tree you see these are the indexes and the values from top down and from left to right so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and also these are the indexes of the array in the same sequence Okay, this is one example uh, of the implementation of a heap by using an array. If you want to see another example, here is a, a second example. Uh, actually, uh, in these examples, as I just mentioned, we are considering a max heap. And a max heap means that the largest value will be stored at the root node. This is an example of a max heap this is the representation the tree representation and there is the array representation the number within the circles uh, at each node in the tree is the value stored at that node or you can say the elements of the tree the number above a node like this two one two three four five six they are actually uh, the corresponding indexes of this array for example at index number seven we have three at index number seven we have three Above and below the array, uh, these lines are actually showing the parent-child relationship. Let us see here. 16 has two child, 14 and 10. 16 has two child, 14 and 10. These lines represent the, the parent-child relationship. It is important to note that parents are always to the left of their children. They are processed first. And also about the height of the tree. So this tree uh, has a height of of three. Total number of levels you can say zero, one, two, three, or the distance from the root to the deepest leaf. One, two, three. That is the height of this tree. And also the height of each index you can calculate them. For example, the height, uh, the node at index four. What is going to be the height? That is the distance to the leaf node. So the distance to the to the fourth fourth leaf node is one. The height of this node we can say is actually one. After implementation, uh, let us shed some light on the operation that we can actually perform on the heap. The basic operation that we can perform on a heap uh, is insert and delete operation. Both the insert and delete operations modify the heap to confirm to the shape property first uh, by adding or removing uh, uh, from the end of the heap. And after that, the heap property is restored by traversing uh, up or down the heap. Both the operations, whether it is insertion or deletion, it will take time which is equal to big O log of n. Let us see the insert operation first. There is a term 
which is very uh, much oftenly used while studying the insert operation and that is known as shift up we will study the shift up uh, in this insert operation as well both these are related with one another assume we have a max heap and we need to add a new item if the heap is an array that is simple we will append that element to the end of the array and after that we have to execute the shift up operation for implementation we will actually have a, a shift up function available and we will call it every time we insert a new element it means that uh, comparing the child item to its parent item and if the child item is larger than the parent then we have to exchange them as a heap is a tree like structure uh, we can easily locate the parent item remember the formula for locating the parent that is j by 2 and the floor function it will give you the parent of the child and where j is actually the current child it could be left child it could be right child and you know the child of both the kids is always the same okay so if you get a value uh, the, the floor function will actually reduce it and the rest can be done in a similar way again the time complexity for the insertion is log n so to add an element to the heap uh, we actually need to perform an uh, an algorithm and the algorithm is mentioned here it actually has uh, three steps step number one add the element if it is an array to the, then the end of the array but if it is a tree then you have to add the element to the bottom level of the heap of the binary heap where leftmost if there is no leftmost then add the element to the rightmost but first you have to go for the leftmost open space after that after adding after inserting the element to the bottom level to the leftmost position you have to compare the added element with its parent if they are in the correct position if they uh, satisfy the heap property stop there if not then you have to sweep the element with its parent and return to the previous step if required step 2 and step 3 which restore the heap property by comparing and possibly sweeping a node with its parent are called shift up operation so as i just mentioned uh, the shift up and insert are related closely related with one another insert mean adding a new element and and this what's happening in these two step is actually known as shift up Sometimes the shift up is also known as up heap operation or bubble up operation, percolate up, shift up, trickle up, swim up, happyfy up, or cascade up. Different names are available for this one operation. And second thing to remember is that the number of operations required, the number of shift up required actually depends only on the number of levels the new element must rise to satisfy the heap property let us see an example to clarify the concept how we can actually insert an element uh, in a binary heap as an example of a binary heap insertion uh, we will consider the max heap so here what you see is an example of a max heap how let us see this is actually a, a complete binary tree and see the second property so the shape property satisfied second property is the values 5 is greater than 3 and 4 8 has no child 11 is greater than 5 and 8 and also the largest element which is 11 is at the root now we want uh, to insert to add the number 15 to this tree where we have to put the left child last level left child okay why not here why not here because first we have to fill this level suppose you want to add 15 to the heap we first placed 15 in the position marked by x I mean this is the correct location to insert 15 after inserting 15 here 
go to the second step compare the added element with the parent if they are if they satisfy the heap property okay if they're not satisfied then you have to sweep them here they do not satisfy because 15 is greater than 8 so what we need to do we need to sweep them 8 will come here and 15 will move up you see we make a shift here because the heap property was violated as 15 is greater than 8 so we need to sweep the 15 and 8 so we have to heap uh, looking as follow after the first swap and after that uh, once you see here you will observe that again the heap property is violated why because 15 is still greater than 15 means the parent node has a value which is less than the child node so we need to sweep again and here you can see we have swept again 15 comes here 11 comes here okay so we insert an element at the leaf and at the end of heap operations the element comes to the root now the largest element is at the root okay uh, if you give some attention you will see that we give our focus only to the right hand side what about the left hand side there is no need to check the left children after this final step why because at the start the max heap was valid means the root was already greater than its left child so replacing the root with an even greater value will maintain the property that each node is greater than its children that is 11 is greater than 5 if 15 is greater than 11 and 11 is greater than 5 then 15 is also greater than 5 because of the transitive relation okay so there is no need to check for the left child if you do not understand very well this example let us see our second example in this example again we are going to consider a max heap this time we want to insert 16 in this uh, in this heap first let us see whether it is a heap or not 7 is greater than 5 and 1 ok 2 has no kit 10 is greater than 7 and 2 ok satisfy the first and second property the shape is almost complete binary tree and also the values at the parent are greater than or equal to the kids the child now we want to insert 16 where we have to insert it here this is the location ok once you have specified the location next thing you need to do is to compare this value with the parent 16 is greater than 2 which means we need to sweep them 16 will come to the location of 2 and 2 will take the location of 16 after that compare the value of 16 with with 10 with the parent again 16 is greater than 10 so it means we have to sweep them sweep these two values now 16 come to the location of the root again there is no need to compare it with the left hand side it is already in solid form sorry not solid form but in the, the value at the parent is already greater than the left child's okay last example here we have a big tree now this is a binary heap it satisfied both the properties and also the array representation is given suppose you want to insert a 52 here so the right child is missing the left child is there so 52 will be inserted initially here at the right hand side of this parent node after specifying the location you have to compare these two values as 52 is greater than 16 we, we, we need to sweep them Okay, 52 will take the location of 16 and 16 will take the location of 52 you can also see this sweep in the array at location 5 we have 16 and at location 11 we have 52 after the sweep 52 will take the location of 5 and 16 will take the location at the index 11 and you see 16 is here and 52 is here next let us see here 
52 is again greater than the parent that is 41 so 52 will take the location 2 and you can see it here okay so we have shifted or swept it with another value now compare it uh, with the root note so 62 is greater mean parent already has the greatest value 62 is already greater than 52 so there is no need of sweep here since our final uh, final heap tree after insertion of 52 is like this okay this was about the first important operation that is called insert our second uh, okay this is the same uh, example repeated our second operation is known as delete sometimes it is called extract one thing which is related with uh, this delete operation is known as shift down these two terms go hand by hand hand in hand shift up was related with the insert and shift down is related with the delete when it comes to to shift down or to delete heap has its special way to delete the item we can't delete any item we want it means that we replace the first item with the bottom one and then shift down when we do shifting down uh, we can locate its children node which are children nodes nodes we know where they are they are at uh, 2j if you remember the, the kids are also at these location 2j and 2j 2j uh, plus 1 these are the location of the kids the, the children this one is for the left children and this is for the right children so we know that then we have to compare the parent item to the left and right item to find the largest one to exchange if the parent item is the largest value we st we stay there otherwise we have to exchange it with the largest value again the time complexity here is log n as we know that the height of the heap is log n because the height of the tree is log n and it follows that the time required to delete a node from a heap of size n is going to be log n. What about the procedure? As we saw an algorithm for insertion, we also have an algorithm for deletion. These are also three steps. First, you have to replace the root of the heap with the last element on the last level. If it is the left element, okay, then the right. So the first thing is to replace the node, the root of the heap with the last element on the last level then you have to compare the new the new root with its children and return to the previous if they are uh, if they are in correct order then you have to do nothing if they are not in correct order then you have to sweep the element just like we did in the insertion sweep the element with one of its children now you have two options you have two children if you have two children then you have two options which one to sweep with okay we will see in a moment the one which is which is the largest we have to sweep it with that value or sweep with the smaller value if we are using the min hap and sweep with the larger value if we are using the max hap so normally we use max hap so we have to sweep it with the child which has the largest value okay step two and step three actually thing actual things happen here as i just mentioned we have to use a procedure uh, an operation which is known as shift down and that is happening in step two and step three and that is sweeping a note with one of its children and this is actually known as shift down it is also known as down heap bubble down percolate down shift down or sink down or even trickle down or happy fi down some other names for this operation are cascade down extract min or extract max or simply there is also known as happy fi operation let us see some example to clarify the concepts 
suppose uh, we have the same max heap and we want to delete uh, 11 which is the root node from this tree first we have to identify that we have to replace it with the last node the leaf node at the last level and that is 4 if it is not available then we have to replace it with 3 so we have to select 4 so 4 will take the location of 11 and 11 will be deleted 4 will come here okay now the heap property is violated since 8 is greater than 4 children is greater than the parent that is not possible in heap what we need to do in this case sweeping the two elements 4 and 8 is enough to restore the heap property and we need not sweep any other elements further just swipe these two elements and that's it the final tree is again a heap 8 is greater than 5 and 4 5 is greater than 3 and it is also a complete binary tree almost complete binary tree because the right kid is missing okay so this is the first example let us see another example uh, let's we want to remove the 10 from this tree first what happened once we remove this 10 what will happen to this empty location so we have to select a root a node from the leaf node to take its location okay uh, we take the last object we have so here the last object is 1 take this object and it will take the location of the root as we can see here it will be removed from here and it will take the root location after it take the location look at how to shift down uh, to maintain the heap property for this max heap we want the highest number at the top at the root now we have two candidates for sweeping that is 7 and 2 we choose the highest number between these nodes and the highest number is 7 so 7 sweep 7 with 1 ok 7 will come here after that uh, keep shifting down until the node does not have any children uh, or whether it is the children must not be greater than the parent but again here we violate the heap property because 5 which is a children of 1 is greater than the parent child is greater than the parent so we need another sweep here another shift down here so 1 will take the location of 5 and 5 will take the location of 1 again uh, from analysis point of view the time required by this delete operation is also log n let us see here another example that is example number three okay uh, we want to delete uh, 62 okay once we delete this we have to fill this empty gap this empty room who is going to take the lead who is going to take this place 16 which is the last node at the leaf 16 have to come here after moving 16 to the root location the node will be removed from here but we have violated the the heap property because the value here is smaller than the child node so you have two child one child has the value 52 and the second child has a value 30 select the largest in, uh, between these two the largest is 52 so 52 will be swept with this location okay again here we now violate the heap property because one of the kid is greater sorry one of the kid is greater than 16 that is 41 so 41 actually both the kids are are greater than the parent but we have uh, to select the value which is greater among these two so 41 is greater than 28 select it it will take the location of the parent 41 check rest of the element 28 is greater than 19 and 27 and 17 okay no need to go shift down no need to perform shift down 16 is greater than 15 no need to perform shift down 30 is greater than both these no need to perform shift down okay the final tree the final tree here is a heap binary heap 
because it satisfies the properties. So these were the two basic operations that we can actually perform on the heap. Now another um, a very interesting topic is how we can actually create a heap. So a heap uh, given an array having elements from 1 to n. The index again we are starting from 1 and the final element is n and n is we know the total number of elements in that array. It is actually an easy task to construct a heap out of this element by starting from an empty array. So what we uh, we need to do is to consider an empty heap and then after that we have to successfully insert each element until until the required array is transformed into a heap. Since inserting an element uh, in the jth location will take only log n time, big O log n time, the time complexity of creating a heap using this method is also n log n. Interestingly, it turns out that a heap can be created from n elements in a theta n time as well, but we will see them that in a moment. First, uh, let us follow the same pattern that we are using. That is, let us consider uh, a max heap as an example to understand how the heap is created. In this figure, it actually provides an example of a linear time algorithm for transforming an array, uh, which actually start from index 1 into a heap. An input array and its tree representation both are shown here. As I just mentioned, we have to start from an empty, uh, an empty heap. For that, we have to consider the leaf nodes first. As the leaf uh, node are already, uh, they already satisfy the heap property, so we skip them. Next, we, uh, as shown in the figure B, we have to consider the two subtrees at the fourth and fifth level. Sorry, at the fourth uh, and fifth uh, index positions. We need to consider subtrees. So this is our first subtree. And this is our second subtree. What we are going to do? We are going to create a heap from this tree. This is not a heap. Why? Because it does not satisfy the second property. How? You see? The value here is not the maximum value. The maximum value in this tree, the maximum node in this tree is 20, is 30. So 30 must be at the root. It does not satisfy the heap property. We need to convert it into a heap. For that we have to start from the bottom up, from the bottom, uh, from the bottom subtrees. First consider the leaf nodes, but leaf nodes are already in the heap, uh, in binary heap form. So skip them. Then consider uh, the subtrees at the last level. So this is our first subtree. Now apply the heap property here. 26 is greater than 11, mean the value at the child node is greater than the value at the parent node. So what do we need to do here? We need to swap these two elements like this. Now consider the second subtree, that is 10, 30, 17. Here it does not satisfy the heap property as well because the left child has a greater value than the parent and also the right child has a greater value than the parent. Okay, So what is the greatest? 30 is the greatest value so you have to swap it with the parent and after the heap operation the final uh, heap subtree is like this. After that uh, we have to consider this third subtree and as you can see it also does not satisfy the heap property because 13 is greater than 8. So we need to swap these two as well. And it is mentioned here. Finally, 
uh, you have to consider this subtree which is our subtree number four here uh, in this subtree you can see that uh, 30 is actually greater than 3 so it will take the location of the parent and 3 will come here once 3 occupy this location again it's violate the the heap property so because 17 is greater than 3 and 10 is also greater than 3 so we will uh, sweep them also like it is directly done here but you have to sweep them okay after that uh, you have to consider the whole tree now whether it satisfy the heap property or not so finally you will get the heap like this and now it satisfy the heap property 17 is greater than both the kids 26 is greater than both the child 13 is greater than both the child and 30 is greater than both the child and also the largest or the greatest value is at the root so this is how we can actually create a heap out of a tree or even an array after discussing the heap let us uh, move our attention to the heap sort algorithm itself the heap sort algorithm was invented by john williams and it actually uses the approach which is inherit inherent uh, from the selection sort although the heap sort is based on the heap data structure that is the tree structure binary heap tree it is based on the binary heap but it follows the the, the procedure of the selection sort as well if you remember the selection sort in the selection sort we find amongst the n element the one that precede all other n minus one element then the least element among those n minus one item and then so forth until the array is sorted uh, to have the array sorted in ascending order heap actually sorts uh, heap sort actually it will put the largest element at the end of the array this is very important to remember while sorting an unsorted list of element by using heap sort it will actually put the largest element at the end of the array then the second largest in the front of date and so on so heap sort will actually start from the end of the array by finding the largest element whereas selection sort start from the beginning using the smallest value but the final order in both the cases is indeed the same we will get the sorted form of array elements uh, we know that in heap uh, in binary heap the elements the, the child's values they are not perfectly ordered sometime left child will have the greatest value sometime the right child will have the greatest value but we know that the largest value is in the root okay for each other node all the dis, uh, descendant are not greater than the element in this node but we know that the root has the largest value so heap sort start from the uh, from the from the heap from the root that is put the largest element in the end of the array and then restore the heap and now has one less element for the next phase for the next step to uh, simplify the heap sort algorithm how it actually works uh, let us consider an example we will work out on this example in two phases in two steps in the first phase of the heap sort actually the array is transformed into a heap okay transforming the array into a heap is the first step and in this step we will actually be using bottom up approach while in the second phase we actually begin the second phase after the completion of the first phase like after the conversion of the given array into a heap and at the second phase the largest element that is the root is actually moved to the end of the array so in summary the heap sort algorithm follows a two-step approach in the first phase 
we have to transform the array into a heap. In the second phase, we actually do the sorting. That is, we move the element, the largest element that is at the root to the end of the array. As an example, uh, we will consider the array represented by data having elements which are mentioned here. You see, the data is not in sorted form. We will use heap sort algorithm to sort out this data. Okay, let us see. Here is a graphical representation of the of the process of the phase one. In this process, uh, we again let me tell you we are using a bottom up method. So all steps leading to the transformation of the array into a heap, they are actually mentioned or given in this figure. You see, uh, first we start with uh, with a tree that is not in the form of a heap. So we have to convert them into a heap. How is that possible? Let us see. The value starting from the from the from the leaf node from the last level here the value at the parent that is 1 is actually less than the values of the children find the greatest value in these two children that is 12 and sweep it with the value of the parent so 12 will take the location of the parent now we are done with this subtree consider this subtree now Again, we have the largest value in the in the children. 3 is less than 6, but 15 is greater than 6. So, swipe it. Here, you can see that 15 will take the location of 6 now. After that, consider uh, this subtree now. Here you can see that 8 is less than 12 and 8 is less than 10. Again, violating the, the, the heap property. Select the greatest in these two values, that is 12, and replace it with the value of, replace it with the parent node. As you can see here, 12 has been replaced with 8. But again, after this iteration, you can see that now the value of this parent is less than the value of the children. Again, sweep here. 11 will come the location of 8 and 8 will come the location of 11. Okay, after this, uh, consider this subtree. Now here, the value of child is greater than the value of parent. Consider these two children. What is the greatest, the greatest, the largest value in these two? 15. Sweep it with the, uh, with the, with the parent. 15 will take the value with the location of 2 and 2 will take the location of 15. After this sweep, you can see that now this subtree again violate the heap property because now we have a small value at the parent node. Again, we need us to sweep it with the children. We have two children. The value of first children is 6 and the right children is 3. What is the largest in these two? That is 6. Sweep it with the parent. So the final heap is mentioned in G. The tree in G fully satisfied the heap property. You can check. 11 is greater than 1 and 8. 12 is greater than 11 and 10. 6 is greater than 2 and 3. 15 is greater than 12 and 6. Now, this is the end of the first phase. We have transformed a tree or we have transformed an array into a heap. Let's move to the second phase which actually begins after the heap has been built. At this point, uh, you can see that the largest element has been popped up, bubbled up, shift up to the root location. There is the largest value in the tree. What we need to do in phase two? We have to move this to the end of the array. And at the end of the array, we have eight. So we have to sweep this 15 with 8. And this is going to happen in the second phase. You see, this is our initial heap, binary heap. We need to sweep this 15 with 8. After sweeping, the position of the binary heap is like this. Okay, 
once uh, the array is going to be like this, the dash the dash portion represent this that this element is in solid form. Here you can also see the dash portion. This element is in solid form, so you don't need to consider it in the rest of the process. Now your tree is like this. Again, uh, from here now you can see that you have to apply the same process again okay happy five happy five find the greatest value that is 12 and repeat the same process so it will give you that 12 is now at the root which is the greatest value in this remaining tree then you have to uh, sweep this element with the second uh, look second last location there is one so 12 with sweep with the one one will take the location of the root and 12 will take this location now these two elements are in solid form and the remaining tree is like this again happy find the greatest value and uh, uh, move it to the root location and then you will see that 11 is at the root which is the greatest value now it will be replaced uh, with with the with the third last location there is three so it will be swept with this element and then after this operation you will see that three elements are now in solid form and your remaining tree is like this again the same process same process same process and then at the end you will see that the array has been converted into a solid form or the tree has been converted into a heap into a binary heap okay a heap sort algorithm uh, the final words about this heap sort algorithm is that the largest element among the given array represented by data we actually find the greatest value that is at the root of the tree and then we sweep it with the element at the last location of the uh, of the of the array okay uh, let me uh, share another example of how actually the heap sort algorithm works this is an animation about how the heap sort algorithm sort out the data it shows both the array as well as the heap tree initially we start with our unsorted array remember uh, the array is in unsorted form and uh, we are going to sort this array with the help of heap sort algorithm so let us see the first operation the first step is to happify the array remember what does that mean as we are using the max heap so uh, which might seems uh, like the counter initiative at first but you should see uh, why, it, why it is like this soon okay this is an unsorted array uh, you need to sort it out you need to first perform the happy phi operation uh, and we will not go into the details but you know how it works first you have to start from the sub arrays and then you have to find to check whether the values at the child nodes are actually greater than the the parent node or not if that is the case you have to sweep them for example uh, in this case you can see that actually 85 which is the child node is actually greater than the parent node so you have to sweep them and similarly you have to repeat the same process with the other subtrees as well so after the happy five process after the phase number one uh, the the array and the tree is going to be like this now happy fying is done you can see that now this tree actually satisfy uh, the heap property we have the largest value stored at the root and also the value at each parent node is greater than the than the child nodes for example 88 is greater than 85 and also it is greater than 83 if you consider this uh, this subtree then you can see that the value that the value at this uh, this parent node which is 83 is actually greater than 42 and 57 same is the case here 73 is greater than 60 
same is the case here 72 is greater than 6 and 48 and same is the case here 85 is greater than 72 and 73 so we have a perfect heap tree or binary heap here let us start the second phase in which we are actually going to sweep the element which is stored at the root node uh, with the element at the last location that is 60. Okay, so uh, this is how uh, things happen. The value at the root node which is 88 is actually swept with the last element that is 60. After the swapping, uh, we now know that one of the element is in solid form and that is at the end of this array. So it means that we have to decrement the heap size by 1. Now you do not need to consider this element in the in the happy phi or in the sorting process because it is already in solid form. So you have to ignore this last element of the array or this last leaf node of this tree. This is not going to be part of our process anymore. What we need to do now is to re-happify the tree because you can see that it now violates the heap binary heap properties. As you can see that the highest, the greatest, the largest value now is 83 and it is not in the correct location. So you have to re happify the tree. After the re happify, uh, the, the tree is like this. So now we have the largest value which is 85, not 83, sorry. 85 is at the root. What we need to do now is we need to sweep this element at the root node with the last element or the second last element there is there is 48 and you know from the tree that 48 is here so sweep 85 with this 48 okay so currently we are doing the the happy five process okay. okay so now we are ready to repeat the process the next max the next maximum element that is actually 85 will need to be swept with 48 so they are swept and that's it once you have made the swapping it means that now you have two elements uh, in the solid form so you have to decrease the size by one now again rehappify rehappify uh, you need to check here consider all the sub arrays here 72 is greater than 6 okay do not need to rehappify here 83 is actually greater than these two values that is also fine 73 is greater than 72 and 60 okay what about this value 48 is less than 83 so we must need to apply the happy five process here sweep them out okay now 83 is greater than 73 and 48 83 is greater than 48. What about this subtree now? Now it does not satisfy uh, the heap property because 57 is greater than 48. So it must be in the parent node. Swap these two values and that's it. Now repeat the process with the next max element. Now our maximum element is 83 which is at the root node. We need to swap it with the element at the seventh location that is 6 which means with this node sweep them out okay after swapping uh, decrement the heap size by one because now we have three element in solid form we do not need to consider them in our sorting process next again we have to rehappify check this uh, subtree 73 is greater than 72 and 60 okay satisfy the heap property 57 is greater than 42 and 48 okay satisfy the heap property but here the heap property is violated because 6 is less than 7, uh, 57 and 73 what which one is the greatest value 73 so swap 6 with 73 again check the heap property oh heap property is violated here 72 is greater than 6 and 60 is also greater than 6 select the greatest value in these two that is 72 and swap it with 6 Okay. what about this side okay the heap property is already satisfied here now we are done 
next we have to sweep this greatest element with the element at sixth location that is 48 so 48 with be swept with 73 and that's it decrement the size now we have four element in solid form rehappify it satisfy the heap property this side 57 also satisfied but 48 does not satisfy the heap property it is less than 72 so sweep it with 72 now here the heap property is violated 60 is greater than 48 sweep them out that's it now we have the greatest value at the or the maximum value at the root we have to sweep it with the element at the fifth location there is 42 sweep them out decrement the size now we have five element in solid form what next we need to rehappify again apply the shifter process again here we do not need to rehappify because it is it already satisfy the heap property and here we have to perform the heap because 42 is less than 60 and 42 is less than 57 what is the greatest value in these two 60 okay again heap property is violated here sweep them with 48 okay now we have a, a fully balanced and satisfied heap tree because the greatest value is at the root node next we have to sweep this value with the fourth element with the index at the fourth location with the element at the fourth location that is 42 so sweep 60 with 42 and that's it decrement the size now we have six element in solid form rehappify check the properties already satisfied properties already satisfied but here we need to make a sweep 57 and 42 sweep them out okay next we have the max element at the root so sweep it with the element at the third location that is 42 so 57 will be sweep with 42 Sorry. 57 will sweep with the element uh, with the element at the third location sorry there is six yes after sweep let us see the size has been decremented by one and one element is added to the sorted list again check the heap property here we do not need to check because it is now a leaf node again leaf node but here this the property is not uh, satisfied because six is less than 48 and 42 what is the greatest value in these two 48 sweep 6 with 48 after sweep uh, sweep this element now we have the max value at the root node change exchange it or sweep it with the element at the second location that is 42 sweep these two elements now decrement the size by one and we have one more element added to the sorted list after that we have only two elements left nothing to do no need to rehappify because they are already in sorted form uh, they are already uh, satisfied the heap property uh, then after that you have to to sweep it with the element at the second location that is six and then after that the array is in solid form so this is how heap sort algorithm actually sort out an unsorted list or it convert an unsorted list into a sorted list with the help of the uh, happyfy mm, process or operation this was about a heap sort algorithm the complexity of this algorithm uh, we will not go into further details but uh, uh, during the lecture i told you that uh, that is uh, n log n okay so this was about the heap sort algorithm thank you so much uh, see you in another lecture goodbye